This lecture is about how to create harmonies from modes and scales that are consistent with the sound of the modes and scales that you're using. Essentially, the idea is that harmonies and melodies are made from the same materials. When you think about Mozart's music or when you think about any music, really, the harmonies and the melodies always are linked together in a way. They're made from essentially the same um, pitch materials. And in modal music, those pitch materials are whatever the pre prevalent scale is at the time. Harmonies are most often based on superposed thirds, i.e. tertian harmonies. In other words, you know, the chords that we know, uh, major chords, minor chords, diminished chords, etc. And they may be simple like that, or they may also include seventh chords and ninth chords, eleventh chords, etc. All based on thirds, of course. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use sounds that aren't based on thirds, as you will see in the course, but it's just, you know, the prevalent way of doing it is with thirds. The harmonies that comprise the major key are well known. We, you know, we all have those memorized and it, they are the actual basis of the Roman numeral system. So here we have a D major scale and I've built the chords on each of the scale degrees. Um, and so we have D major, E major, F sharp minor, G major, A major, B minor, and C sharp diminished. And we attach these Roman numerals. This is something that we all have memorized and have used for years now. Um, but what's interesting is that this same principle of constructing the chords and having chord functions can be applied to any scale, not just the major scale or the minor scale. All right, so let's begin by choosing one of the interval patterns for some scale or mode. And so I'll do that. I'll just pick this one. Two whole steps, then a semitone, then another whole step, then a semitone, then two more whole steps. We'll just use that as an example. So let's uh, construct a scale. I'll start on the note D. So we go up a whole step, two semitones, two E, up two more semitones to F sharp, up one semitone to G, two semitones to A, one to B flat, two to C, and then we finally end up on D at the end. Okay, so the next thing is to make the triads the same way we would make them for the major scale but using only the notes from this scale so the first one would be D and we skip over E to F sharp and then we skip a third up to A and so we use the F sharp and the A because those are the the types of F and the types of A in this scale next one would be E G because the G is natural in this scale and B flat because the B flat is flat in this scale, or the B, excuse me, is flat. F sharp, A, C natural. Next one would be G, B flat, D, C, E, G, I mean, uh, A, C, E, B flat, D, F sharp, and lastly, C, E, G. Okay, so now that we've constructed the chords, then we just figure out, well, what are they? So the first one, D, F sharp, A, that is a D major chord. The next one, E, G, B flat, is going to be an E diminished chord. F sharp, A, C is an F sharp diminished. G, B flat, D, G minor. A, C, E, A minor. B flat, D, F sharp is a B flat augmented chord. And lastly, a C major chord. So these would be the scale degree chords in this mode, which are, you know, quite different sounding than they would be in the major scale. Okay, for more complex harmonies, add the seventh, which means just add another third up on top of the triad that we have already. So I've done that here. And then we can figure out what the chords are that we can make with these notes. So that first one there, D, F sharp, A, C, would be a D major minor seven chord. The second one, 
E, G, B flat, D would be an E half diminished, seventh chord. Next one, F sharp, half diminished. Next one would be a G minor chord, but with an, a seventh that's been raised, not a regular minor minor seventh, but a G minor chord with a raised seventh. Next one would be an A minor minor seven. Then we would have a B flat mm, augmented chord with a major seventh added to it. And then we would have, uh, lastly, a C major minor seventh chord. Now, an interesting thing about this is that the f that in our usual modes, in the major mode, for example, there is only one major minor seventh chord. But in this scale, this chord type, the major minor seventh chord, appears twice. And so already, you know, we have kind of a diverging sound from what we would expect from a typical uh, diatonic scale. Um, all right, so let's try another one here. Uh, this one is a little bit trickier because, um, well, you'll see. So let's start again on D. So we'll go up a whole step to uh, E, then semitone to F, Another semitone to G flat. Remember, we have to go. Uh, we have to use all the letters. So I'm, you know, I, I have to spell that note as a G flat, not an F sharp. All right. Then from there we go up to A flat, up another whole step to B flat, up another whole step to C, and then finally a whole step back to D. Okay. So if we make the triads using only notes from this scale, using our tertian method, then we get some interesting results. So the first chord is going to be D, F, A flat. The second chord is going to be E, G flat, B flat. Then, etc. We'll go through all these like this. So I'm just using the notes from this scale and then constructing the um, triads based on, on the, the, the roots successively up the scale. Let's name these chords. Um, so here we go. We've got the D diminished as our tonic chord. Then um, this chord here is interesting. E, G flat, B flat. Well, uh, so it starts off with a diminished third and then a major third. And we just don't have a name for this kind of chord. It doesn't occur in tonal music. And actually, that's not quite true. It, it doesn't occur in a named form. <laughs> Um, in, as a triad in tonal music. Here again, the seventh scale degree here forms a C, E, G flat. So we've got a major third and then a diminished third. And again, we, don't, we just don't have a name for that kind of triad. Now, th the sound of these is perfectly fine. And if you play it within the context of this scale, and you realize that these two chords that we can't really name sound perfectly good. And actually, we have, um, uh, you know, we, we come very close to the sound of them in tonal music. So, for example, if you think of the E, the scale degree 2, E, G flat, B flat, if you respell the E as an F flat, then we would have three notes out of a G flat dominant seventh chord, that major minor seven. So we would be missing the fifth, the D flat. Uh, by the same token, the uh, seventh scale degree chord, C, E, G flat, if we added a B flat to that, um, then it would sound exactly like a French sixth chord. So these are chords that we are familiar with orally. We just don't have good names for them. All right, so what do you do now? Once you find what the harmonies are, what I would recommend is that you sit at the piano and you improvise using these sounds. So like as a, as a procedure, what you would do is choose one of the modes, you know, one of, one of the scales. Uh, don't choose one that you know already. Cho choose something new. And then um, write it out. Write out all the triads. Write out all the seventh chords. Give them the names, you know, like you sort of prepare yourself that way. Then uh, try to find chord successions. Um, 
and at first just play them just you know play up and down the scale do do chords you know just play around that's the the main idea because what you want to do is develop a feel for what the flavor is of this particular mode and the harmonies that you can create with it all right so then at some point you know you want to find some kind of chord successions that seem to um, establish the mode sort of in the same way that in tonal music we would establish a tonal center by the one and then the four and the five or the one and the two minor chord and the five chord uh, something like that you know you find ways that you can give the listener the sound of the mode in their ear just by what the harmonies are uh, and then one interesting thing about this too is that with each one of these modes um, you want to try to find what we would consider a cadence. You know, now these cadences won't be five to one. You know, they'll be different than that. But you want to try to find like how how do we do this in such a way that when we go from one chord to another chord, that it actually sounds like a cadence. Um, and more most interesting maybe is how do you get that cadence to involve the tonic chord of that mode. Uh, this is trickier than you might think in some cases, especially if the tonic chord is not um, a major or minor chord. If the tonic chord is diminished or augmented, it's much more difficult to establish it as a key center. Um, anyway, but the idea is to play, have some fun with this.